Okay, so for this problem, uh, we've got a hollow conducting cylinder of inner radius A and outer radius B, such that it carries the current I along the positive Z direction. And we'll say the positive Z direction is pointing right out of the page like this, right out of the screen right here. And in pretty much every other direction, it's we're talking in terms of rho. So uh, the Z direction is uh, jutting out, out of the screen towards you. And we have rho that the cylinder's radius is going off in, in all these directions from the Z axis in the center. So the question asks us to find uh, the magnetic field intensity H everywhere. So when you have to deal with problems like this, um, it's, I find it really useful to define all the regions you have to work with first. So that's the first thing I did here. Uh, I know that there's a region uh, when rho is between 0 and A. So in this, inside, uh, inside this circle here before we get to the inner radius here. And then there's also uh, this blue shaded region when the radius rho is between A and B. And finally, there's the region which is everywhere else, which is rho greater than B, which is everywhere outside this cylinder and beyond. Okay, so uh, let's start. I broke this into three sections here. Um, so for this first part, um, we're going to use Ampere's law, where we can equate um, this line integral to the current enclosed by L. L being um, a line which uh, will contain the current that we're dealing with. So if we imagine this green line around here um, just being of uh, some radius less than A and greater than zero as defined by our, um, our little region description here, uh, we know that if, if you can imagine current jutting out of the screen just um, getting right into your face, basically, you can imagine this line around the current um, as a sort of like lasso around the current. Basically, uh, all the current that we care about is contained by this line here. This line is in 2D, but the current is flowing from inside the screen to out of the screen right at you. So again, you can imagine it's sort of like a lasso or a rope around this cylinder of current flowing right at you. So that's what's going on with this. Um, so to deal with this part, um, it's important to understand what the question says uh, when it describes how the cylinder is constructed. It says that a hollow conducting cylinder has inner radius A and outer radius B. So that means uh, the hollow word uh, clues us into the fact that there's no conductor, there's nothing here um, from radius 0 to A. It's basically free space, there's no conductor. So the conducting cylinder, the part of this that actually does conducting is whenever rho is between A and B. Okay, this blue shaded part, this blue shaded part is uh, the whole part of the conducting cylinder and everywhere outside of course is there's no conductor there either so um, that won't conduct any current. So that, having that in mind, um, it's more intuitive to see that uh, if you look at all this blue stuff as being uh, conductive and able to carry current, you'll see that no matter what, as long as your row is between 0 and A, you'll never touch any conducting material. And therefore, the current enclosed by any line uh, of rho between 0 and A is going to equal 0, right? So if you evaluate this integral, um, you would get this. And this is still equal to 0. Um, and once you work this out for H, you'd see that h for the region rho between 0 and a is going to be equal to 0. 
amperes per meter. So moving on to the next section, um, fig uh, don't worry about this stuff on the side. I promise I'll get to it in a second. Now we're dealing with the region uh, from rows equal to uh, from A to B. So it's basically any green circle like this that is uh, just a little bigger than the radius A and just a little smaller than the big radius B. Uh, so you'll see here that now we're dealing with the conductive region. Okay, so again, we're going to deal with Ampere's law here. Uh, you know, the line integral of H dot DL is equal to the current enclosed by L. Um, but we're going to uh, rewrite the current enclosed by L in terms of a formula you might remember seeing from earlier, which is the surface integral of current density dot ds. Okay, so we're going to say this is equal to the current. Um, so for this whole region, we only care uh, when rho is between a and b. So when we're looking at the current density for the region a to b, uh, we're going to look at the current, which is in units of amps, over the ds, which is the surface area of the region from A to B. Um, so you'll see kind of intuitively that if you have units of amps here and units of meters squared here, then that's, that's some kind of density, right? That's current density. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the I alone. And we're going to write this ds now as the surface area of the region that we care about. And right now, the region of the area we care about is when rho is between a and b. So uh, that would be the surface area of a circle, right, or a disk, a two-dimensional disk right there. So we could take uh, pi b squared, and, sub and from that we subtract pi a squared. And then you'd get this donut-shaped thing, which is the surface area of uh, what we care about here. So if you factor out the pi, you get i over pi times b squared minus a squared. Okay, so then that's our expression for j, which we're going to plop into here. Um, moving on. So the current encloses, because then we're going to plug in the things we found uh, for our j and um, ds, respectively. So this used to be the surface integral of j dot ds, but we found our j here, and um, it's going to be in a phi direction. Sorry, I didn't specify. Um, you should always check uh, if you're looking for a quantity that's a vector. You definitely always need a direction pegged on to the end of it. Um, it. So the reason it's in the A phi direction is if you try out the right hand rule, um, again, the current is flowing in the positive Z direction, which is um, pointing towards your face right now. So if you uh, use your thumb to point in the direction of the current, which is out of the screen, and you curl your right hand's fingers, uh, you'll see that it curls in the direction of this circle, or A phi, essentially. Because um, like we said, the z-axis is going to be coming out of the page. Rho, is, rho can be pointed anywhere in this on this two-dimensional image you see here. And that means phi will be any uh, angle from whatever happens to be the positive x-axis on this image, but we don't really care about that. But uh, basically, whenever you're dealing with um, current going in one direction and you have to close your fingers around to see what direction uh, the current density is going, then curling your fingers around will show you, um, at least for this case, that it's in the A phi direction. So because that's in the A phi direction, um, we want to dot it with a ds that is in the A phi direction as well. So you're going to want to use the ds with a phi in it because uh, if you dot a phi, if you dot something in the a phi direction with anything in the rho or z direction, you're going to get zero. And we know that this whole thing will go to zero. And then we'll say, or we'll end up trying to say that the current enclosed by that region, by any empyrean path of that region will be zero. But we know that's not true. We know there's some current there. 
Um, so that answer would not make sense, which is why we use the AFI uh, DS right here. And you can find this from your formula sheet. Um, so once you work that out, um, the integral works out to look like this. And then solving it a step further will look like this. Okay, and then moving on, um, remember that uh, this whole thing is equal to the current enclosed, which is still equal to the line integral of, um, this is still equal to the line integral of h dot dl right here. <laughs> Don't forget about this guy. So once you solve this, solve this guy right here, um, you're going to get h sub phi 2 pi rho equals uh, the current enclosed, which we just solved for. You can divide both sides of this equation by 2 pi rho. You get this. And this h phi tells you that we took the component of h in the phi direction. So we stick an, uh, an a phi in the end to show the direction. And remember, h is always a vector in this course. So that is the second region. So now we're going to go to the last region. Um, and that is when we have an empyrean path which has a row greater than b. So uh, this is our familiar equation we've been working with before. And now the interesting thing is the current i enclosed by l is, well, going all the way back to the beginning of the question, uh, we see that we're told that the entirety of the hollow conducting cylinder carries a current i along the positive z direction. So this whole time it's been carrying a total of i current. Okay, this whole time. So that means uh, when finally we're looking at the current enclosed by the entirety of the thing, uh, by this line which encloses the entirety of the conducting cylinder, we know that the current enclosed by this big green line here is just equal to I. Again, uh, this is equal, the current enclosed by this big line here, this big green line is equal to I because uh, the question said that this whole hollow conducting cylinder um, carries the current I, and that's all there really is to it. Um, so once you isolate this for H, you're going to get H, j uh, just like the last step from the previous part, is I over 2 pi rho in the a phi direction. And remember, this is a vector, so you should have a direction here too. So ultimately, your answers would end up looking like this, divided into three regions. Um, and don't forget your units at the end. Those are easy marks to miss. Um, I personally don't think it's super obvious that magnetic field intensity should be in terms of, uh, should be in units of ampere per meter. So the way I remember that is um, I write Ampere's law here, um, the thing we've been working with for the whole problem. Um, I know that the current is going to be in terms of amps. I know that the DL element uh, is going to be in terms of, uh, of meters, not meter squared or meter cubed. I know this is just a single dimensional line element, basically. So I know it's just in terms of M. So for this side to work out in units of A, then uh, H must be in units of amperes per meter. So that way, when you multiply amperes per meter and meter together, you'll end up with amperes. And that's how I like to remember um, the units of H. Don't forget to put those on your test because you'll be losing easy marks.